Hello, it's me again. I hope everyone has been blessed. Today we are going to talk about the holy observance of Pesach slash Passover. In case you were getting tired of me, here's Elder Stevens to help me talk about it. What's the big secret? Hello to you too. Hello, everyone. Nice to see you again. Well shall we? Okay. What is the Passover? Passover is the first of the annual holy festivals. Yasharal was in slavery in Egypt for 430 years, on this night in Abib, the first month of the year. They were commanded to kill a lamb or kid goat and smear the blood on their doorposts for Yahweh's to wrought a terrible work on Egypt. A mighty deliverance. He passed through Egypt and slayed every firstborn child in Egypt, only the ones with the blood on their door was passed over. The Pharaoh then released our people from bondage. Exodus 12 41-42 reads, and it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the self same day it came to pass, that all the hosts of Yahweh went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much observed unto Yahweh for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is that night of Yahweh to be observed of all the children of Yahshirel in their generations. Yes, and that was just the salvation of Yahshirel. On this date several years later, the son of Eluim was slain on a stake, so that through his blood, everyone in the world who believed in him and surrendered their lives to him, would be spared from eternal death. The first lamb was just a symbol for an even better sacrifice, an eternal atonement for our sins. John 3.16, For Yah so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When is the Pesach? It is held on the 14th of Abib, the first month of the year, which starts on the spring equinox. The spring equinox is the day that has equal hours of day and night. More on this date in another video. Deuteronomy 16, 1, Observe the month of Abib, and keep the Passover unto Yahuwah Lahai, for in the month of Abib, Yahuwah Lahai brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. Leviticus 23, 5 says, in the fourteenth day of the first month at even as Yahuwah's Passover. When it says even, it is explained in Deuteronomy 16, 6, but at the place which the Yahuwah Lahai shall choose to place his name in, there thou shalt sacrifice the Passover at even, at the going down of the sun, at the season that thou camest forth out of Egypt. So on the evening that ends the thirteenth day, it starts the fourteenth and it is at that time the supper should be taken as the sun is going down. What does the Passover Memorial Feast comprise of? The first day of the feast comprises of the supper, that is taken with unleavened bread and wine slash grape juice. This replaced the original way the feast was kept using a lamb as according to Exodus 12 8 to 10 and they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire, and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. Yahusha is our Passover and so gave us a new way of acknowledging his cleansing power and renewing our vow to him each year. Also we are required to remove all leavened bread from our houses before taking the supper, as a way of spring cleaning and starting afresh. Exodus 13 7 declares, Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee, neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. Some people think this is no longer required, but yet it seems very important to the enemy, since he created a holiday named after a pagan goddess, that does the complete opposite, which the world engages in. So unfortunately the world is in rebellion to Yah, many unknowingly and some knowingly, because he said that we should not eat leavened bread around this time. Think about it. The reason we keep this feast is to honor Yahusha's sacrifice for us, why should we be eating dainties, when at this same time many years ago, he was suffering and eventually died for us on that torture stake. Deuteronomy 16.3 explains, Thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it, seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith, 
even the bread of affliction, for thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life. So it is called the bread of affliction because all of our reproach fell upon him and he bared it all for us so that we could be free from the bondage of sin and death. Individuals who are not practicing chim, cannot take the supper. This refers to non-immersed, non-converted and backsliders as the scriptures state in Exodus 12 verses 43 to 45, 48, and Yahuwah said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover, there shall no stranger eat thereof, but every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. A foreigner and an hired servant shall not eat thereof. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, and will keep the Passover to you who will, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land, for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. Also in Ezekiel 44 verses 8 to 9 and 13, it says, And ye have not kept the charge of mine holy things, but ye have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. Thus saith the Adonai Yahuwah, no stranger, uncircumcised in heart, nor uncircumcised in flesh, shall enter into my sanctuary, of any stranger that is among the children of Yasharel. And they shall not come near unto me, to do the office of a priest unto me, nor to come near to any of my holy things, in the most holy place, but they shall bear their shame, and their abominations which they have committed. If you're confused about my use of that scripture, let me remind you that according to the renewed covenant, we are now all priests after the order of Melchizedek, with Yahushua being our high priest. Contrary to popular belief, the renewed covenant is stricter than the first, because of flaws found in the first, and is held in higher regard than the first. As Peter declares in 1 Peter 2 verses 9, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You must be clean when taking the supper and entering into the feast. As Paul rightly states in 1 Corinthians 5 verses 6 to 8, your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Mashiach our Passover is sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. We cannot have knowingly unrepentant sin in our hearts and take the supper. 1 Corinthians 11 verses 27 to 31 explains, Wherefore whosoever shall eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Adonai, unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of Yahushua. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread, and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning Yahushua's body. For this cause when you are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. What is the penalty for not keeping the Passover? If you miss the Passover for reasons other than uncleanness or caught in a long journey, such as burying a loved one, which the scripture makes an exception for them to take it in the second month according to Numbers 9 verses 11, if not for that, then you will be cut off from among our people. Just as the Shabbat, this is also a sign of Yah's people. Numbers 9 verses 13, But the man that is clean, and is not in a journey, and forbeareth to keep the Passover, even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people, because he brought not the offering of Yahuwah in his appointed season, that man shall bear his sin. We should all be preparing our hearts when we see the season approaching and not just at this time but every day. James 4 verses 8 says, Draw nigh to Elohim and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. If for any reason, you have fallen short and need to repent fully before taking the supper, you may do so, taking it in the second month, according to the discretion of the Ruach HaKodesh. The Passover is to be kept only once a year except for the aforementioned exception, as spring season only comes once a year and the scripture says it should be taken in the season when Yasharal was freed from Egypt, 
And now the season when Mashiach's sacrifice freed us death and eternal punishment. We are to not leave anything until morning, keep the feast in one place and not in our own individual houses, but we are required to assemble together as according to Exodus chapter 12. We should also make sure that before the supper, we have already eaten our dinner to the full, especially when you're going to be using wine, and to wait for one another before beginning as according to 1 Corinthians 11 verses 33 to 34. After taking supper, we should wash one another's feet according to John 13 verses 4 to 17. Numbers 9 verses 2 to 3 declares, Let the children of Yasharal also keep the Passover at his appointed season. In the fourteenth day of this month, at even, ye shall keep it in his appointed season, according to all the rites of it, and according to all the ceremonies thereof, shall ye keep it. How long should we keep holding Passover memorial? Forever. Of course. Exodus 12 verses 14 says, And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to Yahuwah throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Yahusha said in his word that he would not sup with us again until we meet in the kingdom, and to keep doing this in remembrance of him. Luke 22 verses 16 to 19. The disciples kept the feast, and not just the supper as many people like to assume, which is why Paul had to address the assembly of Corinth to shed off the old leaven of sin, and keep the feast as a new lump in 1 Corinthians 5 verses 6 to 8. In the second coming of Mashiach there will be a marriage supper grander than anything we've ever seen, it will be the final one as we will all be finally reunited physically with Yah, and it will be the completion of all things. Revelation 19 verses 6 to 9 illustrates this, And they heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Hallelujah! For the Adonai Yahuwah Omnipotent Reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of Elohim. The Almighty says that if we keep his feast, we will be prosperous in all our undertakings. Deuteronomy 16 verses 15 explains, Seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto Yahuwah Luim in the place which Yahuwah shall choose, because Yahuwah Luim shall bless thee in all thine increase, and in all the works of thine hands, therefore thou shalt surely rejoice. That was a lot of information. Did we cover everything? Let's see. Oh, just one more thing. Go ahead. Make sure not to take the supper with unrepentant transgressors, if you know they are still in sin and are unrepentant and you take the supper and keep the feast with them, you are partaker of their evil deeds. 1 Corinthians 5 verses 2 and 11 to 13 declares, And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned, that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. But now I have written unto you not to keep company, if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one know not to eat. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without a luim judgeth. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Yes, that is a good point. For the scripture says in Ephesians 5 verses 11, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them. Is that everything? I think so. Thank you again for spending time with us and may Yah bless you and keep you in until next time. Shalom. Shalom.